Hi, my name is Mike Gaben and welcome to Mission 10 of this KSP campaign. In this vessel we have two tourists, Verum and Tamsi, and they are on their way to space. A mere suborbital trajectory, but with, well, a bit of an extra thrill for them at the end. We'll get to that in a minute, but while we've got these boosters, let's quickly examine this vessel. It's simple, cheap, and gets the job done. Because tours can't fly, the control is being provided by a Probo 9 Octo Probe core buried deep in the service module. As for the booster, it doesn't get much simpler than this. It's just three strapped together thumper SRBs with three basic fins for stability and that's it. Let's take a look at our contract. As you can see, the mission is to get these two suborbital and then, well, make them pass out from G-forces. I mean seriously, how could I resist picking this one up? You can also see that I have two more Kerbals that are to be subjected to this ride. In addition, I have another two that also want to go to space, so this vessel will fly two more times, and that's why it's built on the cheap. In fact, this whole configuration costs under 10 grand. We'll talk about the payload and one other mission coming up in this episode, but right now I think I've got some staging I need to do. Go stage, and you know what? I'm gonna turn this uh, perpendicular to my flight path right now. Oh, oh, oh! We got a little bit of a touch down there with the boosters. I'm wondering if I should have maybe put some parachutes on those. Oh well, that ain't gonna happen now. Yeah, I turned perpendicular to my flight path. Uh, my apoapsis is well over the required 70 kilometers, so there's no reason to go any higher than we need to. My original thought was to strap a couple of SRBs to a small plane to get the required acceleration. I thought that would be pretty cool, but I soon discovered just how tough Kerbals are, and that this wasn't going to provide anywhere near the G's required. The vessel was going to need to be a lot lighter, and I began playing around with different configurations of both solid and liquid fueled engines, finally settling on a trio of flea SRBs to kick these two in the backside. All told, kind of a dull vessel with only two new parts, the TVR-1180C Mark I stack tricoupler for connecting the boosters, and the pointier advanced nose cone type A. Those three boosters gives the vessel a thrust of 513 kilonewtons, which is insane given its 4 ton mass. Indeed, the thrust to weight ratio maxes out at 16.8. That's bonkers! But we are now out of the atmosphere. All conditions are green, so let's punch it. And... Oh, oh, there they go. They are now unconscious. But don't worry. Oh, they're coming back. There they are. They're back. They're fine. <laughs> okay, let's get rid of the service module. And uh, we'll also open up this little service bay at the back here because they do have parachutes in there, which is what's going to, of course, bring them back down to the surface. Yeah, you got to get up to about 15 G, and you got to hold it for a second or two in order to make them go unconscious. Man, Kerbals are tough. You can see that... Uh, our contract requirements have gone green, at least for these two. Still got to do this for two more Kerbals to complete the contract. A G-Force Blackout is something that you can uh, toggle on and off in the difficulty settings. I would assume if you have it toggled off, you wouldn't be getting contracts like this one, because they would be impossible, obviously. And while they recover their wits... This is going to be a tourist-centered episode, but you will be seeing Jebediah for our final mission. He's going to be going into an orbit, taking two tourists along with him. But what he's going to be trying to do is picking up a couple of high-altitude orbital surveys that I missed a couple of episodes ago. Tried again last episode. Wasn't successful then either, so we're going to see if third time is a charm. In the meantime... I think these folks are finished picking up some holiday snaps and enjoying the view. They are coming back down. 
having the aerodynamics of a bullet. Uh, this thing's coming down nose first. No heat shield required because we aren't coming into the atmosphere all that quickly. Ooh, I wonder if I should be closing those service bays. Oh, it's a little too late now. I hope the heat does not affect them. Or the parachutes that are inside. Oh, oh, we're already... Oh, no, we're fine. No issues. Alrighty, so now all I gotta do is wait for... Little parachute icon in the staging diagram over there on the left to uh, stop being red. Any time would be nice, <laughs> and then I can deploy the parachutes. Oh, yellow and green, and deploy. There we go. And of course, from here on, and it's easy. The rest of this went without incident. And then shortly after splashdown, of course, it was time to launch this vessel again. This time with Miri's and Hello! I like that guy. Hello is his name. Anyway, we won't spend much time with this because, of course, it's going to be pretty much a carbon copy of what you just watched. Uh, I'll mention a couple of things I didn't mention last time. Uh, you may have noticed that, actually, as I was launching, I tilted it, obviously, towards the east, but also a smidge towards the north uh, to get it over the water, but also a little bit north of the water so that when I pointed it to the south to fire off those SRBs to get the G-forces necessary to pass them out, they would end up going now a little bit south of the Kerbal Space Center, but still a little bit east. That way they land in the ocean, still not too far from the Kerbal Space Center. I thought that would work out rather well. And as these folks recover, we can see here that our contract has now gone green. That's kind of interesting, actually. I'm noticing here that uh, there's no requirement to get them safely down to the surface. All you have to do is pa get them to pass out. You could kill them. But, of course, we will get them down to the surface. Or, well, maybe not because what I decided to do this time, I thought it'd be prudent to close those service bay doors to protect the parachutes. And I didn't realize that that really does affect the aerodynamics of this thing. Okay, these heating effects should be short-lived. And we'll open up the parachutes and get these folks down. Whoa! Oh my gosh, I've lost it. It flipped around. I have no control. Oh, plasma blackouts! Of course! Okay, okay, I'm back. I'm back. Okay, now I should be able to open up the uh, service bay doors and... Whoa! <laughs> okay, clearly there's some drag associated with those doors being open. Okay, oh, we're still, okay, wait, wait, parachutes. Alrighty. Wow, these guys got a little bit extra of a ride than uh, what they originally signed up for, but they don't seem too upset about it. And then it was one more launch of this vehicle. This time a little bit more of a boring one. You see these folks here, John Pond and Tradine, well, they rather value their brain cells and, uh, you know, their internal organs too and don't want any of this high G nonsense. They just want to go suborbital. They just want to go into space. I got lazy though. It's the same vehicle. I just adjusted the staging so that it staged the whole service everything there. So a uh, bit, bit of a waste, but I don't know. I don't care. And this time I made sure that those service bay doors were open as we entered into the atmosphere to take advantage of the drag that they obviously do provide. Once they were down to the surface, it was contract complete. And I thought as this was going to be the last flight of this vehicle, we'll go through the messages here. See, ferry two tourists safely to their destinations. Tour was a success. John Pond and Tradine had nothing but great things to say about the trip and brought back plenty of photos, 20 reputation. And then we got the money here for each leg of the contract. Okay, bring four tourists on a high G adventure. The tour was a success. Burnham, Tamsi, Miris, and Allo had nothing but great things to say about the trip, or at least the portions they remember. 21 reputation. And then of course the money for each of these. Okay, but then it was time for, you know, one more mission. Yes, you're going to be getting your value for your money out of this video. Hang on. There's money? 
As promised on the helm is Jebediah and he is ferrying, well, two more tourists, Barchel and Claudette, and they want to get into orbit about Kerbin. So Jebediah is going to do that for him. But if you take a look over at the contracts over there on the right, you will see that there is a second contract, a orbital survey contract that has been hanging over me for a couple of episodes now. This one had a lot of waypoints to get, and there are two that I couldn't get a couple of episodes ago, and we're going for them again. And in fact, this is the very vehicle that was used to try and get those before, uh, except that time it was Valentina along with Bob and Bill. And they this vehicle put them into a polar orbit, and then they rode around the polar orbit trying to collect as many of these waypoints as they could, as well as collecting all kinds of science along the way. The difference this time is that we are going straight for those two waypoints. Now you might recall that those two waypoints are actually pretty much right on top of each other. So I've used the waypoint manager to select Dinkelstein's Cavern. And we're getting some, uh, imp oh, we'll stage those boosters, there we go. <laughs> and the waypoint manager is providing me a heading to aim for. So I am aiming a little bit south of that because I figure, you know, Kerbin's going to rotate a little bit as we uh, make our way over there. This might be better from map view. Look at our trajectory. You can see the waypoints up there, way up towards the top of Kerbin, towards the North Pole. You have to keep an eye on my apoapsis. And I think I went a little bit too far to the south, but right now... I'm more concerned with what my apoapsis altitude is. There you go, it's about 80 kilometers. I don't want to overshoot. Now this thing has quite a lot of fuel in it. Remember that uh, it went into a polar orbit, so that in itself cost more fuel. And it also went up to a over 250 kilometer circular orbit as well. So it has, I have no intention on doing all that, but what that does mean is I do have quite a bit of extra fuel in order to make any corrections I need. Let's check out the science here. Materials Bay, 4.4 science. Sure, we'll grab that. How about the goo? Is there any goo science to get here? Where's that one? There it is. Goo. Oh, 0.1. That's not worth it. Might be able to get some more once we're in space. Yes, this thing is equipped with all the science that I have unlocked to date. But I'm not sure how much there is to grab. Bob did a pretty good job last time. Okay, I think I am going a little bit too far to the south, so we'll see if we can pull our prograde vector towards the north as we do our circularization here. And... I'm watching a lot of things. I'm watching my time to Apoapsis, but I'm also watching my trajectory again. I'm aiming for that waypoint. I want to come just to the south of it. Here, let's lock ourselves on the prograde vector. This will be do one thing at a time. Too many things. I got a lot of fuel in the orbiter. We can do some corrections after that. It's nice, Jeb, being level one now that we can just lock the prograde like that. And we will be ditching this stage when our periapsis gets about 50 kilometers or so. I still want it to be in the atmosphere. It does have some parachutes on it, so I should be able to recover it. Well, let's go way to the south. Let's see. How about splitting it between the prograde vector and that normal vector that's there? Yeah, oh gosh, look at this map. Yeah, I'm way too far to the south. I can see that now. So we'll burn here. Still quite a lot of fuel left in the booster. There we go. And again, though, when I get my periapsis up around 50 kilometers, there we go. We'll stage. Oh, yeah, I can't do this in map view. Stage. <laughs> okay. Engage that next engine. Go back. And in fact, let's just really pull that trajectory northwards. All I gotta do is make sure that I leave myself enough fuel in the orbiter that we can get ourselves back down after we've achieved our orbit. Alright, that's about 80 by 80. 
I don't think Kerbin's going to move that much. I think we're still too far to the south. So we'll put it... Yeah, let's put it right back onto that positive normal vector. See if we can not adjust our inclination here a little bit. Okay, that ought to be it. So let's uh, throttle up here a little bit. And I do have to keep an eye on my remaining Delta V being provided to me from Kerbal Engineer. Want to make sure I can get back down. Well, that's getting pretty close. Maybe just a little bit more. There. Oh, that's got to do it. All right. Okay, Kerbal Engineer says I still have 60 meters per second left. Let's observe the goo now. 0.5. Oh, well, I guess I might as well. Okay, and that's going to be it for the amount of science that I can collect. You can see that uh, the orbital contracts for getting these guys in an orbit have gone green. I still have to get them down to the surface to complete the contract. But the main thing I am concerned with is being able to grab that top contract. So we'll get our capsule menu here ready so I can be ready to do a crew report. And I am watching the distance being provided to me from the waypoint manager mod. Oh my gosh, we're under 60 kilometers. Okay, crew report. Yes, that's one. And another quick crew report. There's the other one. Awesome. Jebediah, you are brilliant. That's it. Contract complete. We can get rid of that one. All right. And now all we got to do is deorbit this thing, get it back down to the surface. Might as well get Jebediah out here, collect what little science we did collect. Actually, we got to get the science out of the materials bay. That is going to be, that's going to burn up in the atmosphere. But once that was completed, Jebediah performed the deorbit burn. Get our periapsis back into the atmosphere. And you might recall with this vessel, with this uh, crew module, that it isn't exactly the most aerodynamically sound thing in the world, and Valentina actually had her struggles keeping it oriented with the heat shield down. You see Jebediah here, no trouble whatsoever. Of course, Jebediah being level one, he's able to lock it onto the pro retrograde vector, so that certainly is helping. And, of course, Splashdown went without an issue, and after Splashdown, well, collected 15.5 science that included actually Jeb was able to do an EVA flying over the water and do a pressure scan over the water we now have a total of 36 science not enough to unlock anything so why don't we go to our messages ferry two tourists safely to their destinations the tour was a success Barchell and Clyatt had nothing but great th oh this is just the same thing it always says 17 reputation don't ignore the reputation, by the way. I've made that mistake in the past. Uh, the reputation does improve both the quantity and quality of contracts that you get offered. So do keep your reputation up. Money here. Survey contract. Your assistance in gathering these observational reports has been indispensable. Thank you. 50,000 curb bucks, eight reputation, and then money, science, and rep for the two surveys. Orbit and suborbital over Kerbin for the tourists. And what I really want to do next is upgrade the research and development center, but that costs 676,500 curb bucks. It opens up the next two tiers on the tech tree and also allows Kerbals to do surface samples. But even after topping up my contracts, I had only 483,052 curb bucks, so clearly not enough. Upgrading the research and development center is going to have to wait for a future episode. And in the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.